I thought I was going to have to have a song service another 30 minutes. <laughs> Either that or I have to be excused from the office. <laughs> Grab some notes. I love my pastor. Amen. 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 Said that the Spirit of God moved on them. Right. Oh, right. 
Amen. And that this word is not of any private interpretation. That's right. And you're not able to open the word and say, I believe it means this. And someone else believes that it means right. this. But it is the God-inspired, right. breathed right. word of God. It is right. truth. Right. And I'm going to give you guys a classic Brother Rogers title today. Right. And I'm going to preach to you about the lies of the Bible. All right. Come on. Come on. And even though we understand that the Bible is God's word and complete and no errors are in there, we do have to understand that there are lies in the Bible. Come on. Come on. Talk about some lies in the Bible. Let that sink in. I'll start with the simple one so that you won't crucify me. <laughs> Amen. But the first one was found in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse number 4. When the serpent came to the woman and said, If you eat the fruit, thou shalt not surely die. Right. Amen. Eve, you can go against what God said. And it's okay. You don't have to worry about consequences. Come on, you don't come on. have to worry about what Pastor Bell has been preaching to you and telling you how to live. Who does he think he is? And who does God think he is? And you can't tell me what to do. I'm above correction of the word of God. But the devil been telling that story for a long time. And he said you can do whatever you want to do. But God knows in the day that you eat of the fruit that you will be like God's knowing good and evil. All right. All right. All right. Amen. But we understand from the Bible that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. In 2020, if you step outside of the boundaries of the word of God, there is still a consequence to pay. Amen. We still got to get out of the sinning business. I was thinking a little bit the other day that just because a person makes a mistake doesn't make them a hypocrite. Right. Yeah, some people on. are hypocrites, but some people just make mistakes. Right, right. Come on. Come on. Preach it. Come on. Amen. And somebody has to be set free from the lie that said, go ahead and give up because you're a failure. Right, right. Because you just made a mistake. Right. Well, good people make mistakes. your hand, and I don't know that a hand could go up in this house. Because we've all been there. We've all made mistakes. Amen. But it's, it's about what's in your heart. Is your heart that said, I don't want to live for God? Or does your heart say, I want to live for God, and I want to keep on coming, whether I make a mistake or I don't make a mistake? Today. Amen. Amen. The second lie, I'm going to go into the second lie. The first one was just so you didn't kick me out of here. <laughs> Amen. That was good or settled in. There, there was another lie in the Bible. Amen. Israel had been in Egyptian bondage for 400 years. Right. And the Lord told, if you go way back in the book of Genesis, the Lord told Abraham and gave him a dream about it. A nightmare, the Bible calls it. And he showed him what was going to happen to the children of Israel. And they were there for 400 years. But later on, God brought them out with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. He reached down. He heard their cry as they were in Egypt, as they were being oppressed, and as they were being beaten, and as they were being bruised. I don't know if I can think of anything worse than being a slave. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There they were in Egyptian bondage, but God loved them and he heard them. And guess how, what God did to get them out of Egypt? He didn't just come down and grab them and pick them up and move them, but God called a man. Right, 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 right. 
Amen. And I was telling our church this morning as I took up the offering, I was telling them about God is going to bring you out of Egypt by sending you a man that will preach to you while you're in Egypt to get you out of Egypt. Oftentimes, we like to get on the internet. We like to look up the preacher of our choice. So we like to turn on the radio. And I want you to know that God sends you a preacher while you're in Egypt. So they will try to call, I don't even know a lot of them by name, but if you call them up and told them you're in the hospital, would they come pray? Yeah. I doubt that any of them would come pray. Come on. Come on. Come on. How many can you call in the middle of the night and say, Pastor, I've got a problem? Yeah, come on, come on, come on. And, but God send you a man while you're in Egypt. And that's all for free. I thought I'd do that, throw that in there for you. Oh, man. But they, they come out of Egypt, and when they came out, they, the Bible has a group that came out with Israel, calls them the mixed multitude. They, they, they weren't Israelites. Some of them, I don't even know, were Egyptians. They just said, hey, this is a good place to go. This God is pretty awesome. Let's get out of here. And they made their way through the wilderness, and they had a lot of hard times while they were in the wilderness. But in the book of Numbers chapter 11, verse 5 and 6, they said this, We remember the fish, yeah. Yeah. which we did eat in Egypt freely, right. the cucumbers, the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. And it... There was nothing at all beside this man before our eyes. They got out there in the, in the wilderness. They got out there and as they were there, they began to remember what Egypt was like. They remembered how good they had it in Egypt and how they had all of this fish and they had all of this food free of cost, but they forgot that they were paying for it by their slavery. Right, right, right. Come on, come on, come on. And in the second lie I want to talk to you about is it's not better in Egypt. Right, right, come on. Come on. Amen. It's not better out there living for the devil than it is living for God. Egypt is better. No, it will never be better than it will be in the house of God. tell young people it's not better in the world, but a lot of young people haven't even been out in the world. This is to the old people. Hey, right, you didn't right. have it better when you were out there. Yeah. See, I didn't grow up in the church, and I didn't know a whole lot of things out there, but I do know this, that I would rather be in the Lord's house than out there in the world. I want you to know it's not better in Egypt. Come on. Right. Come on. Amen. We may be going through a wilderness, but we've got it better in the wilderness than we had it in Egypt. See how easy it is to forget of our slavery. And when God would bring us into the house of God, God would begin to preach to us, and we begin to change here a little and there a little, and we then forget how we had it out in the world. And we forget what it was like to be depressed. We forget what it was like that our friends would stab us in the back. It's not better out there. Come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
life to run. And we say all we get is this manna every day. We forget that God is taking care of us. So easy to forget when God is blessing us all the time. That's right. How good we got it now. Right. The devil will come by and say, oh, you had it better. You got to do all these stupid rules and restrictions. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. But you don't remember in the world, the devil had a list of things for you to do. Wait, wait, wait. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Preach. You don't remember you had to go to the bar and sit there. Yeah, come on. Come on, now. come on. Come on. And drink, and you couldn't go home and be with your family. We forget when the devil told us that we have to go home and tell mama we're leaving and we're never coming back. With the little children sitting there at the table crying. Amen. People forget about their gambling problem. And how they were addicted to marijuana. They forget how a needle was when they woke up with needles in their arm. They forget about cocaine going up and how they had to rob their family and steal from people. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. And we remember what it was like to be camping with the fellas and drinking and having a good time, but we forgot what it was like when we had to go home. Yeah. And the devil said you had it better in Egypt. I want to tell somebody it's not better in Egypt. It's a lie of the devil. It's a lie of the devil trying to turn you around. It's the lie of the devil trying to show you the good, but not show you the bad that you had to go through. It's the lie of the enemy that would try to make you think for one second that God is not as good as the world was. Book of Psalm chapter 16 verse 11 said thou show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. Amen. This is where joy is at. Amen. In the presence of God, you're never going to find a greater joy than what you're going to find in the house of God. You can go in the world, you can go to Egypt and have fun, but you're not going to have joy in the world. church this morning. I had children's church. Uh, when I got done, the fist fight broke out, so I won't preach the same message. <laughs> but I did quote this verse. Amen. Verse in John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. Right. Amen. That's what's in Egypt. Right. Right. Amen. A thief coming after you to kill you. A thief coming to steal from you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. A thief coming to destroy you. That's what's in Egypt. Glory. Come on. Amen. But Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. And I don't want the lies of the devil. Amen. I don't want the devil to deceive me, to turn against a church that cared about me, a church that prayed for me, a church that loved me. Amen. And let me throw something in. If you're looking for the perfect church, you'll never find the perfect church. Come on, come on, come on. And if you're expecting your brother or sister to be perfect, remember, they're not perfect either. That's right, that's right. Come on. If you're looking for the perfect preacher, remember this, you'll never find the perfect preacher. That's right, that's right. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. How come it is that we can be unperfect and everyone else has to be perfect? <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah, How come yeah, it is yeah. that we can make a mistake and that's all right, right but come on, come when on. you make a mistake, that's good. can tell a little lie, but if somebody else told a little lie, they're going to hell. Come on. Good. Church full of hypocrites. So I'm going to go ahead and quit coming because everybody else is a hypocrite. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's the best excuse I've ever heard. That's good. Jesus. 
first of all. But it doesn't have anything to do with you. Amen. How mighty God is does not have anything to do with whether you're going through a trial or having a good time. It doesn't matter. It simply doesn't matter. Amen. God is God when we're on the mountain and God is God when we're in the mountain. Amen. God was God in December when everything was going good for me. But I want you to know I stepped in a hole and sprained my ankle and he was still God. When I was in the ER, he was still God. When I was stuck in the bed for four days, he was still God. He didn't change when I was well or when I was sick. God's godness was not predicated on my circumstances. Amen. He's as much God if you got a million dollars as he is if you're broke. Amen. He's God when your car is running and he's God when your car won't start. Come on. Come on.